one downside of hiking popular trails is that there's never never too much of a distance between you and other people. So when you talk to yourself about the plants, you get looks. And unfortunately the guys behind me, uh, they walk at the same pace. So I'm like stopping every few seconds to record a video like this. And the beautiful landscape. So yeah, I keep on steady pace, build some distance, then watch it all. Ooh, look. I think these are, yeah, the little tiny American beach nuts growing on uh, suckers, which I've seen before. Surprising that they're able to get pollinated this low to the ground because they're wind pollinated. As we get higher, the trees start getting t stunted towards the top due to uh, the wind. So it kind of smushes them. This is a common feature I saw in North Carolina on their peaks and slopes their deciduous trees kind of like a bunched top and the higher you get the more dwarf the forest will be As you can see even right here trees are probably 30 to 50 feet tall whereas up there they're maybe 20 to 40 feet tall and getting shorter the higher we get up Another snow squall is blowing through. This is all lake effect snow from the Great Lakes, which are about, I don't know, 500 miles away? I'm about 200 miles, I think almost 250 miles away from home. And usually the lake effect snows of, the, of uh, this size. If you saw my video from yesterday, the Tri Town Ridge, typically the uh, clouds, the snow squalls, they shrink. They're much more diminutive and they're more wispy clouds than ones that dump snow like this one. All right, we're at 3,500 feet. I'm still climbing. The peak of the mountain, I think it's 4,100. We still have another thousand feet to climb, if not a little bit more or less. Not sure if it's gonna undulate, but you can see the forest are get much more dwarfed. Such awesomeness. You know, you don't ever really, I mean, you don't get forests like this in Connecticut unless you're out in the mountains. You really don't get forests like this unless you're out in the mountains. And I'm usually in the coastal plain, which is a lot shrubbier. It's uh, still crazy to me that I haven't seen, I've seen one Ericaceous shrub, or sub-shrub, that being uh, the monotropa of the Indian pipe, uh, it's just crazy to me because almost all of southern New England, you won't be in a forest that doesn't have a significant heath cover from black huckleberry to blueberry. So it's strange to see forests like this without that. Right here we have some Betula papy papyrifera, or the paper birch. You can see it, pe see it peeling. That's why they call it the paper birch. Makes paper more or less. Look at that, that's awesome. Just peel it right off. Love it. Here's another old growth specimen of yellow birch. Look at the size of this thing. Looking like an oak tree amongst the thicket of beech and the occasional fir. There's more fir right there. Mostly beech. More yellow birch, more paper birch. And look, uh, what do we got here? Might be an oak. Yeah, I don't know. Nope, it's a, well, part of it's a beech. Yeah, this is an oak right here. Likely a northern red. Well, it could be a sugar maple. Actually, it is a sugar maple. Boom, sugar maple. The forest is starting to transition to coniferous. You can see a lot more bigger ones up here. Beautiful. Look at the nice blue coloration on that. To think that this is only three hours away. I could leave at 6 a.m. and be here at 9, 9.30. That's insane to me. 
I typically don't go over an hour for my hikes. So if I am going to go over an hour, it's better it better be good. You know, and this is this is pretty good, I got to say. Got to say. Look how beautiful. Ah. Oh, nice conifers. It's going to get so much better once we reach the top. Oh, look at that nice. I know I just said this, that nice blue coloration. Ah. Oh, with the snow. Ah. Oh. Beautiful. This area must be epic in the summer with all the mosses. I bet you the whole ground is covered in moss. Now we're transitioning into the spruce fir uh, highlands. And most of the birch and beech are being phased out. Still have a few here and there. Ah, oh, look, nice, nice and dark. Beautiful specimen right there. Here we have some nice polytrichum. Very nice, probably, I don't know, polytrichum commune. They're hard to tell without uh, getting a microscope. Or, especially when it's freezing like this, they kind of bunch up. If it was more open, like I'm sure some of them in here are more open. See, you knock off the snow, see how the snow insulates them. That's a polytrichum, and then that might be a calcladium. That might be beautiful branch moss. I can't really tell. Look at this bonsai yellow birch. That's awesome. Nice paper birch there. And looks like it's mostly just firs.